Welcome back, everybody. You guys are going to get introduced to the old me. I found a very helpful video that I used to have up um, before I had to basically delete my whole channel in order to get uh, get through my YouTube stuff. Uh, it was a really goofy time, and I basically was just deleting stuff left and right. And yeah, this was just one of those videos. But I was going through all my stuff in my hard drive, and I was like, well, this is actually a really helpful video. I did a pretty good job. It's all about drop shots. Uh, it's something that I use on a regular basis, and I wanted to help everybody, you know, I, I've always wanted to help people. This this video is from, like, 2017. Uh, if you guys have been around that long, you'll, you'll kind of remember it, but I, you know, since then I've gotten a lot more subscribers, and I plan on going more and more, so if I can help anybody else out... Uh, this video is the one to do it, so stay tuned. I hope this helps you guys catch some more fish. Just doing another how-to real quick here. Um, I had to retie one of my rods because my drop shots were getting a little too short for me. But I figured I would show everyone how to do a simple pre-rig drop shot so you can have it laying around. Uh, that is, if you want to pre-rig or just to tie one up real simple. There's a couple different ways of doing it, and the way that I do it, I want to explain so it's pretty simple to people but I just showed you if you look at my other video about preventative line twist about tying an inline swivel for many uses but uh, I like to rig stuff up like this so I have an inline swivel with my drop shot set up on it so this is pre-rigged real simple you choose your drop shot length uh, I'll show that a little bit closer up so you guys understand but if you think about it it's real simple it's just one one piece kind of like people using uh, crawler harnesses that are already set up with a swivel in mind you just tie that to your main line and go so it takes a lot of trouble out of uh, building a new drop shot every time you break off or lose a sink or whatever so I will get closer up for you and I will explain some of the knots and stuff that I use and hopefully that helps out a few people with drop shotting and hopefully it helps you catch more fish. Okay, let's see if we can keep this simple. So this is my old rig setup for my drop shot. It's pre-rigged. I'll show you pretty simple. So this is your inline swivel that I just took off. Drop shot weight I just happen to be using. And then you can use drop shot hooks or uh, what are they called? I think they're Aberdeen hooks. But uh, honestly, I like Amagatsu, one of the best hooks out there. Real sharp stick point. Never have a problem with losing fish. So, this right here is about a two and a half foot section of line so what I'm gonna do it's basically an improved clench knot I don't know if you can see this I'm gonna try and zoom in on it and make sure you can see it real well so whatever you're tying it to this works for a lot of things I like using it for light line but this is my inline swivel so go through it once Go through it twice. So now you end up with this little loop. Instead of just with a regular clench knot, you go through once, you go around the main line three to five times, and then you go through the, the little loop you created from going around it, and then back through. That's your clench. So this is the same thing, except now I'm holding on to that little loop. I do the one, two, three, Four. I like four. Seems to be a good number for this knot. Now that little loop overlaps the other one. You go through those two and then back through that main spiral loop. Helps if you leave yourself some tag in. So now you got that knot. Wet it down. Always wet your knots, always, and 
you can see I'm using light line here. So this is now tied to the end of this. I snipped this little tag end off. So that's that's the part that goes to your main line. That's that inline swivel. That's what makes this basically a tie on unit. So now I go to the other end here. Like I said, there's about two and a half feet of line. Just clip this off your main line on your pole. So there's the end of that. Now, most drop shot rigs have you do a dropper loop, which is fine. You can tie a loop up here in your line, tie your, you know, tie your hook to it, and then put your dropper down here. But I like that not so much because it, I really feel like it makes your hook hookups better, your line strength to not strength a lot stronger. You lose a whole lot less fish. But here's the important part. So this is a walleye hook. Uh, I forgot what size it is. I believe it's like it's like an eight. It's pretty small. Um, I like using medium to small size just for hookup percentages. But so the trick is, is you take your line and you put, pass it through the top of this. So if you were to take this and tie it with this end down, when you tie it to the line that's how your hook's going to be. And that's not, I mean, you could hook fish in the bottom of the lip, but that's not how it's designed to do. With it upright and the line tied through the top half, when that, with the way this knot is designed, it locks into your hook. And when it locks into your hook, it keeps the hook at a rigid 90 degree angle. So all your baits are presented perfectly through the water column. And basically it's a perfect drop shot setup. And like I said, I feel like it, with this hook, um, with the way it's set up, the knot is stronger than a normal loop knot. It might be the same, people will argue. But uh, so now the trick here is with this way, you gotta figure out where you want your dropper. So I'm doing like like a 10 inch dropper here. So now you have to hold the hook in that spot to do the double through again. And it's the same thing, double through pull that extension down but see now now you have this tail that came through the top down to the bottom and that's going to help lock up the hook upright the same thing except now you have this upper part of your line a lot of times I like to tie that to my my pull right away if I'm doing it th that way but same thing main line one two three four and you come back here go through both loops now you got that knot again and you hold on to it the whole time because that dropper distance will change if you don't hold on to it you know it'll, it'll slip so again wet your bait always wet these Slowly pull it tight. Okay, so now I have my swivel. The line to the hook so this is just determined I use the broad length but I like a little about a foot foot and a half two feet to my hook and then honestly if you want to you can from your hook down this dropper can be two feet long ten feet long whatever you can cut it down to you know the increments so this is where it would be right now so it's like an eight once I get it hooked up but if you want a 12 inch dropper, you want a 14, you know, two foot, it's all up to you. So you can leave a lot extra here because you can always change that. I've just gotten used to tying it that way because with these drop shot weights, it's very specific, very simple. So, try not to pull too much through. And 
I always tie my drop weights on. I know a lot of guys purposely do the wedge thing just so, you know, they're not losing these when they get hung up in wood or something like that. You can pull them through or you can pull them right off. I mean, but otherwise I like to do that. Just, you know, one knot lock on, trim tag in. So this is how simple it is. So there's your dropper. If you watch watch the hook, if I pull the line tight, the hook stands straight up. And then that would be this is where you're attached to your main line. So main line on here. So dropper line to the, the hook. So when you pull tight it pulls this upwards. And then down to your dropper. Now if you want to, you can do it this way where you don't have this. And this this line coming off here is actually just your main line. So you can literally, if you want to tie up droppers out on the water, and you're, you know, you're not trying to waste a bunch of time, you can do it the same way that I just did it. Um, basically, main line, tie your hook up you know, as far as you need it from the dropper. You sell these at a bunch of bait shops. Lakeside Bait and Tackle has these. Uh, always in stock. I mean, he's got a bunch of different kinds in there, so, I mean, there's a variety. It basically depends on how you're fishing them, the wind, the waves, you know, the weight of the bait, how fast you want to drop. But, simply put, dropper, hook, either main line, or if you're looking to make rigs, it's really simple. Put these inline swivels, take this, get one of those little foam rolls, and you know, just wrap this around it, hook it up, and put 10, 12 of them on there. You get broke off, pull it out of your tackle box, tie the next one on. Didn't lose any time fishing, tying up another drop shot. So, I hope that helps. And drop shots are an amazing technique that you should uh, definitely look into mastering because you can catch tons of different species of fish on it. Okay guys, so like I said at the beginning of this video, this is obviously an older video. Uh, obviously I'm in, a, I'm in my fish cave now, uh, but that was one of the helpful videos that I had uh, deleted from my channel from years and years ago. Uh, but it, it was a helpful video and it was just one of those things. I, I had to delete it, it was stupid. Uh, YouTube can be, anybody who actually knows YouTube will understand. It can be really stupid and why you can and cannot do certain things. So uh, put it back up there. Hope it helps all you guys out that are new to the channel. Anybody that sees it that's, you know, never been around here. Obviously, if you're not new here, you know what's up by now. But if you're new here, please just remember to